So hello guys, welcome to Rage Against the Dice. Today, as you can see, we've got DC Deck Builder. What we're trying to do throughout 2018 is play all those games that we bought last year and in 2016 that we didn't really get the chance to either play at all, in the case of this game, which I did get, as I said, over 12 months ago, or that we haven't played on the channel. So this is DC Deck Builder, it's by Cryptozoic, it's for two to five players and it's ages 15 to up. And this is just the main deck, you can also get a number of expansions, and I believe there's also a DC Villains deck building game as well, where the rules slightly differ. Now the way the game works is, you each, this is the basic layout, sorry, you have a main pile, and these are the cards you can buy, you have weaknesses, which look like this, um, and they give you minus points. You fight super villains and that kind of thing. So you start off with 10 cards, seven of these punch cards, and three of these vulnerability cards. Uh, vulnerabilities don't do anything. They're just not negative, not positive. They just kind of fill up your deck and they're really annoying. You want to get rid of them as quick as possible. And punches give you one power. You use the power to buy cards. So you start off... Set up your board as we have. We'll take another look at it in more detail in a second. Then you get these cards. The cards in the main set, Wonder Woman, Superman, Green Lantern, Batman, Cyborg, My Boy the Flash, and Aquaman. And each one has a different ability. Um, so if you were Wonder Woman, for each villain you buy or gain during your turn, draw an extra card at the end of your turn. Superman, plus one power for each different superpower you play during your turn. And a superpower looks like this. And it's orange. Heroes are blue. Villains are red. Equipment is silver. Um, and then you get locations and things like that as well. So you'd shuffle these up and you draw one at random. So you don't get to choose who you be, which I don't like. But it's the game mechanic, so I'm not going to complain about it. What I'm going to quickly do is grab the instruction book, which looks like this. And is really, really good. Really helpful, really detailed. Shows you what a lineup should look like. And as you can see, it's the same as the lineup that we've got here. Um, but this is the page we want to look at. So that's your DC superhero. There's the two starting cards, punches and vulnerabilities that we were talking about. Weaknesses, they give you minus victory points. Then you have super villains in red. And these are the main bosses you fight. Your villains, locations which are pink. Villains with attacks, so the attack does something when it's put down. Heroes, superpowers, equipment, and then superpower with a defense, which is orange as well. And then the game works like so. Um... You have 10 cards in your hand, as I said, 7 punch, 3 vulnerabilities. You shuffle those up, whoever goes first, which is decided at random, unless you've got the flash, he always starts first. Um, you build a deck of 5, and each of you do that. 5 in your hand, 5 on thing. Um, and then whoever goes first would go first, and they would play punch cards or other cards with power to buy cards here. Once you buy a card from here, it doesn't replenish until the end of the turn. So the way the turn sequence would go is, you play cards from your hand, total up your power and purchase the cards with combined costs less than or equal to the total. As soon as you buy or gain a card, place it in your discard pile unless instructed otherwise. So that's really important. You build up a little discard pile, then once you run out of your normal deck, you shuffle it back into your discard. So much like if you've watched our Rumble Slam videos where... The bad things that can happen to you that go on your discard pile can start flooding into your deck, as can the good cards you buy, but also the weaknesses and things that you can get throughout the game. Um, the way that you win this game is one of two ways. Either you defeat all the supervillains, um, of which there's eight in a basic game. Raj al Ghul always starts. Once you defeat him at the end of the turn, you'd flip it over and you'd fight that baddie next. Or... If you can't fill all five of these slots in what's known as your lineup because you've milled through this deck. Most cards are just discarded, which means that if you use them, they go on your discard pile. But there are some cards that are destroyed and they go out of the game. And that's why we've left that little blank space there. As I said, it's played two to five players and it is much better when it's played with multiple players. Um, 
But that's not to say the game isn't good by itself, because it is. Um, and Alan and I have been playing it, just the two of us, just to get in and get some practice in it before we start featuring it on the channel. Um, as I said, we are going to be featuring more games. We like deck building games, but we don't tend to film them. Um, our favourite being um, the one I can't remember. Uh, sh yeah, it will come to me. But we have the DC one, we have the Marvel one. Um, we have a number of different ones that we're particularly fond of. Sentinels of the Multiverse is the one that I couldn't think of. And that's our favourite one, but we do have a lot of others. We also have a lot of board games we haven't been playing, or haven't played. Um, Arkham Horror, um, even your likes of Carcassonne, Settlers of Catan, so we are going to be featuring those. But yes, we are going to feature the odd playthrough of DC deck building game. So, as I said, you'd set up your thing as this, you'd have your main pile, your lineup of five, you have... Seven villains which are shuffled at randomly from the twelve or from the well you get twelve but one's Raja Al Ghul. So you'd shuffle the eleven, draw seven of them and put them face down, and then put Raja Al Ghul on the top. You stack your weaknesses and you stack your kicks, which are just like bonuses you can buy. You each deal seven punches, three vulnerabilities, shuffle those into a deck, and then deal out five for your hand. You then draw a card at random. So for instance, I would draw Yes, and I would be Wonder Woman, so. so then Wonder Woman would be my character throughout the game. If I was going first, I would then use any power cards I have to buy any cards that are on the board. And as you can see here, these are bought, that's the cost. So that costs seven, and these little gold stars here are the victory points that it gives you at the end. Because once the game ends, um, it's not who defeats the last villain or who was the one who mills this deck. Um, once the game's over and you've run out of cards here or on the villain, super villain pile, you would then total up your points, taking off any negatives. And some cards have special abilities that give you extra points at the end of the game. You total all that up, and whoever has the highest would win. Which is cool. Um, so yeah, so the game would work basically like that. You'd buy cards, take them out. At the end of the turn, you'd then replenish any cards in here, so there's always five. Um, it would then move on to the next person's go. You always discard your hand at the end of your turn as well and redraw back up to five, so you can't store some tasty cards in your hand that you really, really like the look of. Um, which is both cool and it sucks, because there are times when you're like, oh, I wish I could keep this, but there's no point playing it now. Certain cards have abilities. Um, <coughs> as you can see here, she's a hero, so she gives you plus one power when you're buying things. But you may put up to two cards from your discard pile at the bottom of your deck. And so you, if you played that card, you'd action the writing on it. Um, have we got another one? Green arrows are one that comes at the end of the game. If you have four or more heroes in your deck, this card is worth five victory points. So as you can see, it's a star there. If you have a decent amount of heroes, which I don't think I've ever had um, less than four hero cards, these blue ones in my hand, you get five victory points for this card. Um, and the rest of the time it just gives you two power each time you play it. Um, and this, Kid Flash, every time you play it you draw a card, but this doesn't give you any power. So you could play it and you draw a card, but you don't actually get um, any power to buy new things. And then we'll look at this one, because it's just here. Play the top card of your supervillain stack and then return it to the top of the stack. The first appearance attack does not happen. So as you can see, we'll look at Raj Al Ghul as an example. Raj Al Ghul, at the end of your turn, put this card on the bottom of your owner's deck before drawing a new hand. Um, and then it says, this card starts the game at the top of the supervillain stack, and he gives you plus three power. So if you were buying things, he'd give you plus three power. What I'm going to do, because this is set up to actually have a game and everything's all shuffled and neat. I'm going to grab a random supervillain card that didn't make it. So I will know one guy who's not there. And it's Lex Luthor. So as you can see, first appearance, attack. Each player gains a weakness for each villain in the lineup. So the more villains you have here, which are those red cards, you'd give everybody these. Um, and we have seen it where we've had five villains in and we've got five weaknesses. They were bad times indeed, but you'll see at the top it has a normal draw three cards. 
So if you have this in your hand and you play it, you would get that each time you play it. And as you can see here, he scores five victory points. And to beat a supervillain, you have to, just like buying a card, you just use its number here, which is 10. Um, so Raj al Ghul is eight. If you could get up to eight, you could defeat Raj al Ghul. Hooray! And then you would get that card. Uh, he would go on your discard pile, then you'd reset up the board and everything, and then you'd flip over to see which supervillain was underneath. Yeah. As I said, in the coming weeks we will be doing some playthroughs of this game, as well as a number of the other deck building and card games we have. Um, we've got some new fluxes coming up. Um, you're going to see Gloom, a number of other games that we either haven't played for a while or we're not playing as much. Um, so yeah, as always guys... Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you will check out Cryptozoic's website. Maybe pick up a copy of DC Deck Builder yourself. Um, certainly stay tuned for the next few days when we actually do a playthrough of the game itself. Thank you very much for your time. Pray the dice gods. Hope they smile upon you. Take care, guys.